When there's multiple big releases, I have to decide which one to cover first, and Monster Hunter Wild's beta I thought would be more interesting overall. Uh, however, now let's circle back around and take a look at Dragon Age Veilguard, which I've been hearing is much better optimized than Monster Hunter Wild's, and I am... Uh, going to show you how it plays out in today's video. I'm going to use the same three PCs that I used in the Monster Hunter Wilds testing. So we're starting out here on the low spec PC with, with an i5-9600K and an RTX 2060. So kind of a mid-range PC from what, like six years ago or so, 16 gigabytes of RAM, pretty typical. Uh, but then we'll move up to a more modern mid-range PC, but still not uh, totally current gen. Uh, with a Ryzen 5 5600X and a 6700XT to get some AMD testing in there. And then we'll take a look at how the game performs on an RTX 4090 and 7800X 3D, like absolute top of the line monster PC, uh, and take a look at how it kind of scale through all of those. Uh, looks like we're getting around 60 FPS here in this opening city area. Uh, so everything looking pretty good here, but what sort of settings are we running at? Uh, well, we're at 1080p resolution, and um, that is using native uh, resolution, just using the, the TAA low uh, anti-aliasing. You can totally turn off anti-aliasing in this game. There are a lot of really great PC features in this game, by the way. Just I love the menu design. You can change settings and see what happens while you do it. Uh, a couple of the settings require a restart, but not too many. And again, here we are on the medium preset. Uh, and it looks like we are well within our uh, six gigabyte VRAM buffer uh, that we have on the RTX 2060 here. So um, I have played a bit further than this, but I'm just kind of showing you this little intro area. Uh, I'll run around a little bit, but you'll get the idea that it basically here, let me start the average frame times and everything. Um, it's hanging out mostly uh, a little bit over the 60 FPS line. Uh, even if you get into some combat and things like that, these. Uh, dragons, fire effects, all of that. We're still hanging out around uh, 60 FPS. You can see some dips into the upper 50s there for just a, uh, just a second, uh, but that's pretty much what you get. Uh, the other thing to note is that this is the uh, also perfectly capable of a 1440p display at pretty reasonable settings. Uh, if we go with 1440p native resolution, we're gonna be asking maybe a bit more than the GPU can handle. Uh, but uh, that doesn't mean you have to play at native resolution uh, because here again, we're down kind of into the, the mid thirties or so. So probably not, not the optimal way to go. However, uh, the game does feature DLSS, FSR, all of that. And by just going to DLSS at the quality setting, which I think on a 1440 output still looks quite good uh, and is a great way for aging hardware, uh, GPU hardware to, uh, to handle um, uh, more modern releases, although, uh, you know, you hope the modern releases don't completely abuse it instead of optimizing the game at all. <laughs> Here we can see that now 1440p DLSS quality at medium settings. We're once again back up to pretty much the same frame rates we were at a native 1080p resolution. And I think overall the um, image looks better at 1440p DLSS quality than it did at the native 1080p. I just do the little extra detail that we can get out of it and all that. So uh, I think this game is, uh, yeah, perfectly reasonable at medium settings um, on either native 1080p or 1440p DLSS quality on the 2060 and i5-9600K based system. I will mention on the i5-9600K part, you can see the CPU is pretty heavily loaded here, uh, meaning we could push performance further uh, by taking more load off the GPU, but not like a lot further on this kind of a CPU. Uh, for example, if I use DLSS, uh, kind of abuse it and go all the way down to ultra performance mode, this is not because I'm suggesting you do this. This is more to uh, reveal more of how fast can the, can the CPU keep up uh, with the GPU here by taking some more burden off of the GPU. And if we do that, we actually do see that now the CPU is hitting around the 90% mark, 95% mark, the GPU uh, is oftentimes still kind of maxing out around 98%, but you will more frequently see some dips where the GPU waits a, uh, a bit on the CPU, uh, um, especially when that CPU usage spikes to near 100%. Uh, but the point is we're still able to achieve some higher frame rates here, kind of in this uh, mid 80s sort of range, uh, if you'd rather sacrifice some more of the visual quality in order to get an even higher frame rate experience. 
Uh, all right, why don't we check out the more, slightly more modern mid-range system with the uh, uh, Ryzen 5 5600X and the uh, 6700 XT. All right, I've decided to use the same medium settings as I think they are fairly opt optimized. I mean, not like perfectly de designing each setting, but, you know, you could do better optimized settings list, but the point is, I think you get a lot of performance for what you're getting out of the visuals if you're just selecting a graphics preset. And also we get some direct comparison to the, uh, the previous PC we tested. In other words, I'm still at medium settings and I'm starting out at 1080p, but now we're on the uh, Ryzen 5 5600X and 6700 XT based system. And this is now achieving nearly 100 frames per second in the same area where the uh, the lower end system was around 60 frames per second. And again, this is at the native 1080p resolution uh, with uh, the low TAA selected, uh, no upscaling and at the medium settings. So it's looking like uh, if you want a high refresh rate 1080p uh, experience at medium settings, you're absolutely gonna get it. And I think that we could then move to 1440p resolution where I think a lot of people who bought a 6700 XT class GPU uh, would probably have originally been targeting, uh, although I think 1080p high refresh rate is also a good choice for that kind of uh, uh, system. So it's looking like here, now we're at native 1440p uh, resolution and over, uh, it looks like over 60 FPS. You know, the frame rates we're getting seem similar to what the 2060 got when it was using upscaling, but we're getting it here without using upscaling. I don't even know what my jump button is, guys. <laughs> anyway, um, I haven't actually started playing this game yet for real. It's been more uh, running around benchmarking some stuff. Anyway, if we did want to use some upscaling on, uh, you know, to try to boost performance here a little bit further, that is definitely an option. So if we want 1440p medium, uh, but maybe kick on uh, FSR at the quality setting, we can go ahead and see what happens to our frame rates. And it looks like they jump up about to where the native 1080p resolution was performing around the 90 FPS mark. Now, given the CPU usage uh, on the Ryzen 5 5600X, you can see that no cores are going much past about 70% here when we're at 100 frames per second, uh, indicating that if you did turn down graphics settings further or we're using a higher end GPU with this CPU, uh, this CPU could push to much higher frame rates. For example, we could probably go all the way down to performance mode upscaling uh, just for the sake of seeing if it'll push the, uh, the frame rates much higher. Uh, looks like we're still GPU limited, going over 100 frames per second here. It looks like we didn't get a massive boost out of that. Uh, but you guys get the idea. We're not, we're not hitting uh, CPU limits here. If we go to ultra performance mode upscaling, uh, we're now over 120 FPS. Uh, CPU starting to hit more into that 90-something that uh, range. And uh, the GPU usage dropping into the lower 90% range. So we're indicating more of uh, kind of starting to hit the limits on the... Uh, uh, the CPU frame rates here as well. But it looks like you're good for uh, over 100 frames per second or so, at least in this area of the game, on the Ryzen 5 5600. Okay, why don't we go ahead and pop in the massively over RTX 4090 and 7800X 3D system and try to just max this game out. Well, we are once again right around 60 FPS, but this time at very different graphics settings, indicating that this game can challenge the highest end hardware, but can also scale down to reasonable hardware, hitting reasonable frame rate targets on all of those systems, which is definitely what I'd like to see in a game. I don't mind, you know, an RTX 4090 running the game maxed out at about 60 FPS, as long as you can also adjust things down, still have it look good and run well on older hardware as well. Uh, so that's what we're seeing here is the game completely maxed out. Now notice the resolution now is native 4K res uh, resolution. I do not have um, uh, any upscaling going. In fact, I'm even on DLAA upscaling. So that's uh, even more demanding than the lower TAA settings that I was using on the other GPUs. Uh, and then we're on not only on the ultra graphics preset, but I've even turned on not just the selective ray tracing the game has available, which is more optimized, uh, but I've also gone ahead and kicked on the ultra ray tracing option. So this is just absolutely maxing things out and just brute forcing not just a native 4K resolution, but an even more costly anti-aliasing option than normal 
uh, with DLAA. And despite all that, we're still hanging in around 60 frames per second. And the natural thing to do if you were going to be maxing out ray tracing options and things like that would generally be to at least use DLSS quality, uh, which generally at a 4K output resolution still looks extremely close to a native 4K resolution, but will have a significant boost to performance, especially when using ray tracing, uh, which can all, uh, often be extremely heavy on kind of a per pixel basis. Uh, you can see that our frame rate has just about doubled uh, from kicking on DLSS quality compared to DLAA. Uh, and we're now hitting over 100 frames per second at absolutely maxed out settings other than DLSS quality. Um, so certainly seeming to performing well here. Uh, you can see the game is using a lot of the CPU cores and threads. This is an eight core 16 thread processor and this is a 7800X3D. Uh, we can even get into some combat here and the frame time graph uh, is still looking pretty good. You can always cap frame times for a, uh, uh, you know, even smoother experience and, and more consistent experience, but overall uh, numbers are looking pretty good. And uh, we could go ahead and look at some other options as well. By the way, the game does have uh, frame generation, for example. So if you were already achieving 100 frames per second, uh, then frame generation does not have a uh, you know, significant latency penalty if you're already at a pretty good setting. And then if you're on an extremely high refresh rate monitor, for example, um, it could go ahead and uh, boost frame rates to kind of take advantage of that. For example, I'm on a 240 hertz 4K display. So I wanted to try to fill that out as much as I could. We could try kicking on frame gen. Um, just again, as always, keep in mind that generated frames are not increasing the responsiveness of the game. But if you're at a high enough base frame rate, uh, the additional uh, f uh, motion fluidity can be nice on a high refresh rate display. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the frame generation back off. And then often when I test out the 4090, people are like, don't just test it at 4K, also test it out at 1440p. So, okay. Uh, what if we were instead at 1440p re uh, resolution uh, on the 4090? Because I think it totally makes sense for a high frame rate 1440p build as long as your CPU can keep up. Uh, and that's what we might look at here. And I'm going to go ahead and turn DLSS back off. So we're running at a native 1440p, uh, but I'll go ahead and kick on DLAA upscaling. This is completely maxed out 1440p, in other words. And um, let's go ahead and reset the frame rate counters. Yeah, and it looks like we are well over 100 frames per second, completely maxed out, including the maximum ray tracing settings uh, at 1440p. And it looks like the 7800X3D CPU could push beyond uh, what we're seeing here because uh, it does not appear to be a CPU limit. We're still hitting 98% GPU utilization and no CPU cores appear to be particularly high. So more for the sake of seeing what the 7800X3D can do as a CPU, I'm gonna go ahead and try doing some aggressive upscaling at 1440p, uh, more just to watch the um, w watch what the CPU can do. So we're gonna go to all the way to ultra performance upscaling to take some burden off of the GPU and kind of see uh, where the 7800X3D starts hitting its limits. You can see the GPU utilization is now around 77%, 75%, indicating that we're now seeing the limits of the CPU and the GPU is now waiting for the CPU. Uh, so it looks like the CPU can hit 150-ish, uh, 140-ish uh, now um, uh, frames per second, and that's with the ray tracing maxed out. And do keep in mind that usually ray tracing uh, does take a hit to CPU performance. So that's something to think about. All right, so it looks like we've shown that this game can scale down to modest hardware, and you can make some choices to, to you know, either push graphics or target higher frame rates. And it can also scale up to challenge even the highest end hardware at 4K resolution if you're trying to do it natively at max settings, but then can easily adjust down uh, in order to hit high frame rates uh, still at a most, uh, you know, like, what were you seeing, like 4K DLSS quality type of a situation. Um, that, that was still hitting pretty high frame rates. All right. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and edit this all together so you guys can see it. So hopefully you enjoyed the video, and I hope all of you have an excellent day.